welcome to our very first episode of Sin Shop Talk, which is our new podcast. Welcome indeed. Today we're here at the set of the Downtown Podcast. We've both been on the show a few times in the past talking about things like Maker Fair and the Sin Shop and 3D printing and generally just being goofy <laughs> in the audience. And we're just inspired to create our own podcast, uh, a little bit more focused towards maker news and happenings and and, uh, and events that are focused towards makers in, in, uh, in downtown Las Vegas and, and surrounding areas. We want to thank uh, the Downtown Podcast crew for actually hosting us for our intro today, but we also want to thank them for inspiring us to, to create this podcast. So shout out goes to um, Dylan, Jackie, Melissa, Dan, uh, Mike and Adam and everybody else who, uh, who helps make the Downtown Podcast happen. So why else are we actually doing a podcast for Sinshop? Well, there's always so much stuff happening at the Sin Shop. Um, every open day you come in, um, there's always new faces and people working on interesting projects that you haven't seen before. Um, so much stuff happening. Decided we wanted an outlet to, to share and, and showcase some of the uh, the projects and the makers that that are there that are working on things and uh, hopefully introduce you to some of them. Mm -hmm. um, and we also want to just talk about the Sin Shop um, and keep you updated on news and events that are happening. So what have we got coming up on this episode in particular? Well, uh, we're talking to Mark and Sarah, who have both built Delta Robots, and we interview them each. Uh, they have a little bit of a friendly rivalry going on. <laughs> we'll look at their stuff. And then we have a... I just want to show a little tour of the Sin Shop and tell people what it's all about. We we'll kind of show the inside and outside of the shop, what the different areas are to people who aren't familiar. What is Sin Shop and what's a hackerspace? Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. Uh, Sin Shop is what's called a hackerspace, which we've mentioned a couple of times. And a hackerspace is essentially um, like a global movement. It's a, a bunch of different communities around the world who get together to make things and they get together to teach each other how to make those things. And usually it takes place in a building and, and it's full of tools that people share. And it can be really, really cool tools like 3D printers and laser cutters and uh, routers and kind of electronic soldering stations. And so everybody comes together in, in order to kind of have like-minded conversations and activities with each other and just almost show off their projects as well or get assistance on them. Yeah, that's right. yeah. So it's located downtown. Um, it's at 117 North 4th Street. It's across from the Denny's and the Gold mm -hmm. Spike. <laughs> Should we take people on a tour? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Sin Shop is located in the heart of downtown Las Vegas. It's surrounded by people, lots of things that light up, and probably the fanciest Denny's you've ever seen where you can grab a beer or get married. This being a touristy part of Vegas, it's not all that unusual to see showgirls out in the wild. These window graphics were all airbrushed by Akeem. This is the classroom area where we teach classes and host meetups. This vending machine is one of Nate's projects and will eventually dispense electronics kits and Arduinos. This torso is named Tiberius and has 3D printed nipples that you can download from Thingiverse. This is the electronics and rapid prototyping area. We have a Lulz bot and a MakerBot Replicator 2 for 3D printing. The benches were designed by Eric and assembled by SingShop members. The sewing and crafts area includes several kinds of sewing machines and paper cutters and things like looms. We also have a Z Corp Z400 powder printer that's currently being restored and the 90 watt CO2 laser cutter from Full Spectrum Laser. All the way in the back, we have restrooms and personal storage lockers for member projects. We're now entering the danger room where we have a shopbot CNC capable of making really big things like furniture. We also have a mill, a drill press, table saw, band saw, and any number of things that can cut off a thumb. That's why we call it the danger room.
Finally, there's a backyard area. You can see some leftover flags from our mini maker fair. And you can see how close we are to the free monster experience. The platform over there will be a giant slot machine themed zipline called Slotzilla. Naturally, we use John Arclight's open access control to get in and out of the building. Cool. Well, hopefully you liked the, uh, the tour of Sin Shop and it kind of gave you an idea of what it looks like. It's still a work in progress. We're still, uh, still building out the different areas and there's a lot more to come as, uh, as, as we reorganize and, and, uh, and build the shop out some more. Um, and hopefully if you haven't had a chance to come down to the Sin Shop, it'll pique your curiosity mm -hmm. and you'll come down on one of our open days for a tour. The open days we have will always be on the top of the website, uh, sinshop.org, S-Y-N-S-H-O-P.org. And if you come down one of those those days, somebody uh, will always be happy to give you a tour and show you around. Also, if you're an out-of-towner, um, we love people visiting from other hacker spaces or like-minded uh, you know, maker people who just mm -hmm. want to talk and talk shop. And, and we have one of those uh, hackerspace passport stamps. So if you do have one of those hackerspace passports and you wanted to get another stamp in the book, then definitely come down and get your book stamped. Yeah, I think Crux actually carved that out himself out of mm -hmm. a block of vulcanized rubber on the laser cutter. Pretty good. Very maker space or hex very space stuff. <laughs> cool. So, uh, as you heard before, we interviewed Mark and Sarah, who were both members of our hacker space, and they created Delta Robots and they had a collaborative approach, but they were also slightly competitive. So, uh, let's check that interview out now. I'm here with Sarah Petkus today, and she's actually been a SynShop member for almost a year now, and she's actually built a Delta Robot. So, tell me about your Delta Robot. A Delta Robot is a it's a tripod and it moves around this effector end and it has a huge range of motion and they're used to do like pick and place and assemble things very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what I'm using this model for at all. So they're more, it's more of an artistic project, but that's, that's what they do in essence. I'm here with Mark Koch, one of the founding members of the Sin Shop, um, and he's built a Delta robot. Um, and I'm here to talk about that. So Mark, uh, why don't you tell us first of all what a Delta robot is? Uh, a Delta robot is a kind of robot arm that uses three motors to drive three paddles um, that eventually converge onto this thing called an end effector. Um, but by driving those three paddles at different angles, you can move that end effector around in XYZ space. Um, factories use them to pick up objects and move them. So like sorting, uh, sorting items or picking things off of a conveyor belt. Setting um, chips, things like that. Chips, that, yeah. things like that. Um, and they're, uh, they're, the design lets them be extremely fast, very fast at what they do. So a lot of factories use them to quickly move a product from end to end. Cool. Why did you build one? Why did I build one? <laughs> um, I have seen them at like real deltas, the big giant ones at trade shows. Um, and I've just been fascinated with them since I've seen one. And uh, I think it's the simplicity of them, having just three motors and this, this kinetic thing that, that the way it works, it looks simple when you look at it. And I, the first thing that occurred to me was, hey, I could probably build that. So I- You're right. I, I kicked think... the idea around for many years. <laughs> and uh, so I decided to finally build one. This project is called Light Play. Um, it's going to be pretty much like an ins light installation where there will be a field of these robotic devices that are supposed to um, emulate flowers, you know, and they'll move and um, articulate kind of like a choreographed dance. So one person will be controlling them and they will be doing whatever that person is, um, you know, inputting via EEG, which is a um, headset that reads your neural impulses and then it will then do whatever you tell them to. Can you tell me how you actually put these together and whether you used any of the kind of cinch up equipment here to do so and just take me through like kind of what all the pieces are. Okay well originally I was um, I was hacking these together with like Tupperware and spoons and forks like anything that was plastic that I could cut away at with my Dremel and I was using hobby parts, so um, I would buy joints and anything that I needed and I would scrap them together and I thought that that was how I was going to be building these. And then at some point, like last summer, I, um, I went to First Friday and I met everyone at the SynShop booth and I saw the, you know, the desktop 3D printers that they had there and I had no idea that that technology existed and then once I got to know everybody, they were like, hey, you know, you're, you're using plastic stuff like a savage, you should probably try 
printing them out or something in a, you know, with a 3D printer and you can design your parts and they can look exactly how you want them to. So from last summer till now, I redesigned all the different pieces in um, SketchUp and I used the replicator too here at the shop to print them out and make these pretty little, you know, packages that are complete in their own little thing. Because uh, 3D printers have been the big uh, rage with uh, hacker spaces lately, um, uh, I finally got my hands on my own 3D printer and it, it made it uh, kind of obvious that I could f make those complicated parts myself now. Um, so I started with just really uh, studying the design of what a Delta is and just printing parts and reprinting parts until I got it right. And uh, so I built the kind of the me mechanism for the Delta without the motors, but the whole kinetics of it um, built that first and got that working. Um, so the 3D printer is one of those things that helps helped me get to that where two, three years ago I didn't have access to that. It would have taken me a lot of effort. And I used the laser cutter to cut the acrylic to make the base and then etch the um, title of the project. Um, they each have a name, they're all named, and then... Um, What's the name of this one? This one is Sznurek, which is Polish for um, string. It's like a nickname for um, like a tall, pale child. What kind of 3D printer do you have at home? I have the Replicator 1. Okay. Um, and did you design your own uh, robot? Did you, did you design the, the CAD files for it, or how, how did you...? Yeah, I use a program called ViaCAD, okay. um, and it's kind of like an AutoCAD light, like a $70 CAD program. Uh, and that had a learning curve for me because I'm not a mechanical engineer. Uh, so it took me a while to kind of get used to the uh, using that tool and understanding just some of the things that are part of a lot of mechanical CAD programs that I just, my brain just wasn't really getting. Uh, but I've gotten better with it and now I'm pretty, fairly proficient at making my own 3D parts. Uh, just whenever I think of them, I'll spend a couple hours and I'll have a part and I'll print it. So you had a little bit of a serendipitous moment with another Synshop member yes. and you found out while you were building a Delta robot that he wanted to build a Delta robot too. So that was Mark Koch. Tell me all about this kind of interaction you guys had. No. <laughs> Sarah came to Synshop uh, last year and she was building a Delta on the bench mm -hmm. and I walked up and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> she's building a Delta. So that really is what inspired me to like, uh, turn my ideas uh, in, you know, into reality of here, here was somebody that was already doing something that I was inspired by. Um, so I, I think she helped motivate me to get started and, and think about, well, if I'm going to build one, what would mine look like? I went for the first time to um, the, the hackerspace meetups, which were at the time being held in his garage, and I met him and I brought my, my savagely hacked together you know, Tupperware robot, which wasn't even functioning at the time, and he saw it and was like, oh, I always wanted to make one of those. And he was actually the one who um, kind of gave me the push to build the pieces, you know, in SketchUp and then, you know, eventually 3D print them. And as I started developing my project in that direction, he started doing the same thing because he happened to own a 3D printer. And then we kind of built up from, from there, but that's where it started. You see somebody building something and that inspires you and you build that and then that person's inspired by some of the things you do so there's a lot of just collaboration. I'm guessing that you guys collaborated to the point where different ideas were kind of taken from the both of you and put together into your projects like yes <laughs> what sort of what sort of ideas did you bring to both of the Delta bots? Um, let's see um, the the general design like I had seen other Delta robots that were already built you know DIY on the internet and I liked the small format and the fact that they were um, people were using servo motors and hobby parts because um, it kept the price pretty cheap. Mark brought up the ingenious idea to use um, ball bearings, because if you look at this, um, everything's 3D printed except for the, the ball bearings. So you can cut out buying these expensive hobby parts that they're, they're called um, swivel ball links. And um, for like, you need 12 of them to create a complete Delta robot, but for a pack of 12, it's like $20. And like nowhere on the internet can you find them for anything cheaper than like $20 <laughs> for a pack. And I mean, when you're paying for motors and everything else, you know, like it, it adds up and, you know, he, he's like, well, we don't need to do that. We can just, you know, buy, you know, a bag of these things and 3D print, you know, U-joints that will hold on to them. And it works, you know, like we tested it out. Like he, he initially printed out the first two pieces that link together around the ball. 
and it, it held, you know, like no matter how you articulated it, it, it would, you know, pretty much hold its shape and do what it was supposed to. The best idea I stole from Sarah, um, I think just the servos, the idea of how she dr drives it with the servos, um, ultimately I would love to use step promoters, mm -hmm. but to get it, to get something quickly, the first prototype was, was yeah, servos I, th I think are pretty cool, they, they work. Well, it's ongoing. Um... It's, it's nice because he, like I kind of hit like a, a stale point in this project where I wasn't working on it for a while. I had moved on to other things and at some point he had, you know, made progress on his and he was bringing in, you know, parts of his robot Amber and I was seeing them and, and I was like, ah, oh, I need to catch up, you know. <laughs> and I was, I was hitting speed bumps with the, um, learning the, the program, there's like a learning curve, trying to get it to do what I wanted. And I, I muscled through that pretty much. in because he had brought his pieces in and I saw them and I was like, I can't let him be better than me. <laughs> yeah. So there was a little bit of competition. Oh, there is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's have to be better. I'd like to say mine is better, but that's this is what's in my brain, right? This mm -hmm. is the image in my brain. <laughs> I think that uh, the art project, mm -hmm. uh, that Sarah wants to build a thousand of these, um, uh, is very inspiring. And I think that's part of that whole interaction of that somebody's doing taking the same basic uh, thing and doing it a completely upside down, different... I think, I think I've heard you refer to it as a Polish uh, Delta Bot the, before. The Polish version, which is upside down, yes, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to me about of it course. today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back next month with another episode. And this week is Maker Fair, so we'll actually be flying up to San Francisco um, and Hopefully get some footage of the fair there, maybe some of the surrounding areas like the, uh, the Noise Bridge hackerspace. Um, Crux and Sarah are also going to be there, so we'll try to maybe follow them around and see what they're up to. I don't know if Crux is, I mean they'll be definitely walking around with their, with their goggles and, uh, and try to hit some parties and things and, and, uh, and we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And of course we'll have another maker profiled, uh, probably some news uh, classes and things like that uh, we'll be showcasing. So. Yeah, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. This is some good B-roll. <laughs>